Welcome to the Digital Europe Tech Talks, taking the pulse of European tech in just 10 minutes. I am your host, Cecilia bonfeld Director General of Digital Europe. Join me as I tap into the minds of tech leaders, exploring their innovation stories, tough decisions that they make every day, and their journey to expand in Europe and beyond. Today, I am happy to welcome Andreas Kleve, co-founder of the Danish company Corti. Corti uses voice recognition and artificial intelligence to empower medical professionals with instant life-saving insights. Analyzing millions of patients' interviews, it predicts critical incidents such as cardiac arrest by identifying patterns in conversations. Andreas, welcome to Digital Europe Tech Talks. Thank you so much. So um, you won the Digital Europe Unicorn Award in 2020. Can you tell us a bit about your journey since then? We went from um, a local uh, Danish startup of, I don't know, 25 people. Uh, we're 100 people now, uh, we're in three continents. Uh, our customers sell 100 million patients a year. Um, and yeah, the, still only the beginning. If you look at you know growing business like yours, it's it's a new area. It's artificial intelligence. You are in a sector that is rapidly you know using new technologies. Um, but what are the biggest challenges? Have you had to make you know many hard choices on on the way? It's going to be a terribly long interview. You want to hear all of them? But uh, I think the, the the most important truth is that AI is really hard to build, but it's also really hard to buy. So if you're a buyer in a critical sector like healthcare, you need to take a lot of things under consideration before buying and educating the buyers to buy the right thing at the right time in a reasonable and responsible way is complicated um, and ongoing strains the buyers a lot, meaning that they might not be as willing to adopt new technology due to this strain of, of buying, hosting, scrutinizing, monitoring, and quality assuring these big AI models. You use AI in healthcare. I mean, what type of AI? I mean, everybody talks about AI like it's the same thing. But what, what type of AI are you using? Are you using foundation models? You know, what is it? What is it, this AI? So we, we dream of having a world where every health professional has real-time second opinions from their colleagues delivered by AI that helps quality assure a notch, uh, document journal, and code every patient interaction. So... The, the professional can focus on the patient. That's our dream. And to do that, we need more than one kind of AI. We need many kinds all the way from foundational models to classic supervised statistical models and everything in between. So the assistant products we have is running more than 20 models in real time together as one big wholesome strategy to help professionals. I remember like meeting you, um, it must have been in 22 or something like this, and you told me that U.S. is your biggest market and that you are really expanding and investing in U.S. And right now, you, you also catch you, you know, in, in New York. Uh, so why is that? Why, why, why U.S.? Ultimately, it's a big market where everybody speaks the same language and REI is a language dependent. That was a major uh, gain. The really big gain, though, is that... Um, the perils of the global healthcare system isn't uh, clearer uh, anywhere else but here. So we have the smartest, most proficient healthcare professionals in the world working under a system that is more commercial, more to be true, truth transparent than the, the European version because the incentives are clear. And that allows companies like us to, to easily position the value of our technology and in turn grow faster and in turn build a better product, which hopefully in the end will benefit all. You mentioned a few of these uh, very tangible benefits for a company, scalability, language, you know, agility, talent. I mean, when you look at Europe, uh, what's your plan for Europe? I mean, do you see Europe as a big market in the future also? or As a, a Scandinavian and a European, I identify as European. Um, we as a company don't see Europe as one market. We see Europe as multiple markets. Uh, first off, each language. It's a real thing, especially when you do language technology. Secondly, uh, we deliver to healthcare. The healthcare systems are quite different if you move from Spain to, to Greece um, to, to Sweden. So um, we have plans for certain parts of Europe, but we don't feel there is a rapid and simple plan to compare market access to the U.S. market access muscle and activities, which are much more clear cut, easier to do, uh, government act and uh, transparent. So just just curious, I mean, now we have the AI Act, you know, 
some people might say that you know, Europe make the rules and and uh, and US make the technologies and and uh, now we have this AI act coming into force I mean how do you how do you see the AI act? Is, is it helpful is it what is it going to do uh, to your company and how will it affect you um, I, I really applaud uh, us Europeans for wanting to be world champions in, in fair play in AI I really do I really hope it travels so everybody else wants to live by our rules. Uh, historically, that's not been the case. So the Americans are probably going to make their own version. The Chinese have already, way before us, made their uh, very different version. And I imagine the rest of the world will too. Uh, although I hope they will get inspired. We don't see a conform AI legislation forming globally because there's so big advantages in building industry-friendly AI legislation. And we're, I think we're going to see more industry-friendly legislative frameworks being rolled out in certain parts of the world that's going to draw in a lot of talent. So just to, to double-click, like this is, for the most part, rocket science. And building rocket science, uh, it leaves a very little margin for AI right? if you want to do the really foundational, really uh, transformational stuff. So you want to build it the place that has the best circumstances to make it a success. That's why most actual rocket companies are the desert because the risk is nowhere to go wrong. We don't need a desert for AI. We need uh, infrastructure. We need tools. And um, I, I hope that the marketplace becomes conform and everybody wants to play as fairly as we do now in, in, in Europe. But if that doesn't happen, it will dismiss just and it will be harder to attract talent and it will be harder to attract um, investors. That's my worry at least. So, so, I mean, if you look at a competition, you, you, do you expect any competition coming out of the EU or will it come from the US or, I mean, where do you see the player, players emerging in this healthcare space? They are, have emerged and they are American. <laughs> um, not that there aren't uh, European uh, focused companies too, but they are like us, very US focused commercially and uh, more technically focused in Europe. And that seems to be the uh, ongoing narrative in healthcare is that you take your innovations to the patients in the US and you might build it cheaper here in Europe. So for many healthcare companies and AI and tech companies, Europe is becoming a price hitch where it's easier and cheaper to build it locally where you're from. But the patients who benefit, the customers who benefit is American first. Hmm. Okay. So listen, where do you get your data? We all know that you need a lot of data to train the, the models. So, so where do you get your data? And uh, is it easy enough in Europe to get the data? The short answer is no. Uh, but I'm not sure it should be easy. Uh, it should just be transparent why it's not easy and how to make it easier especially for the data owners. So culture doesn't own data. It's not our job to own data. It's patient data. Like I'm a patient. So I, I want to own my data. And I want the organizations I entrust to process my data correctly. We are vendors. So we help data processors process data. We can be a data processor, um, but we don't own data. So we build with our customers and customers. They are allowed to operate on data and their data we help build them on. But a big part of our leverage specifically is that we build with customers so they can go to market and they can emulate on their data. And then we do in the US primarily. What are your plans for the AI Act? Do you, do you plan, although your major market is shifting um, primarily to be in the US, are you still going to look at the Data Act coming out of Europe as something that you want to implement or are you going to kind of wait and see? We're going to try to implement it and we're following it closely. And uh, we're very excited about parts of it, um, worried about some other parts of it. We'll definitely try to implement it and help feedback the model to see if we can form newer versions. And um, continuously, we'll try to, to, to be both uh, productive and involved here in Europe and in the U.S. So for a business leader like you, right? I mean, right now you're in the U.S. I mean, I know what it means, a long hours, hard work, uh, but also a lot of fun. But what does success look like for you? So uh, in, a in AI, scale matters. I think that's been proven. The bigger the models, the, the more uh, impact you can have. I think that's very similar to a lot of founders like me. We really want to see our products get in the hands of as many users as possible. So if Cordy is successful, we end up helping uh, billions of patients. That's the goal. And that's why we sit here and that's why we uh, build this video. It's ultimately to benefit billions of patients. Okay, maybe just one last question. If you were to give an advice to uh, the president of the European Commission, who, by the way, also awarded you with, uh, with this prize of uh, being a Digital Europe Unicorn Award and applauded it, what would that be if you should like advise her on getting growth on, of AI solution and keeping you know, companies like yourself and, and Corti you know, committed to European markets? Invest in uh, public sector re-education and upskilling on AI. We need the buyers and users of the biggest, most important problems, the public sector. 
to be more informed on AI, more trained on AI, and have more resources, which they don't today. Secondly, the the bias, the public sector, and obviously the private market, but I think that will organize. It needs clear incentives. So the public sector needs incentives to innovate using European technology. And that's not clear today where the majority of AI is coming from the US and beyond. So upskilling and investment into resources for public sector to train, to build, to apply, to develop AI. So they can, if you don't build it, you don't understand it. That's core. And secondly, clearer in, in incentives to incentivize public sector and private buyers in Europe to buy and use more European AI. Hmm. Andreas, listen, um, good luck and good growth and loads of opportunities to you and to Corti. Thank you so much for participating in this uh, short tech talk. And uh, we wish you all the luck in the future.